Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 10 part 2 on Goodman's Paradox. The objectives for this video are the following. After watching, everyone should be able to, number one, explain how language might determine whether we find change or not in a certain situation. And number two, explain how language might determine what regularities we find in a sequence of occurrences. And number three, explain the significance of the Goodman paradox. So last time we ended by saying that projectability is not simply a yes or no affair, and that some regularities are highly projectable, some are kind of projectable somewhere in the middle, and some are not projectable at all. In this video, we'll talk more about just how unprojectable a regularity can be, which is what the Goodman paradox demonstrates. Now, I'll be using the definitions from the book in this lecture, since they're the ones that Goodman uses in his fact, fiction, and forecast where this paradox is described. And that way, everything will match up for those who are interested in the extra readings as well. So we begin with a few definitions. And using those definitions, we'll construct a couple of examples that address the first two objectives. The examples show how the language we use to describe a certain situation can determine whether we find change or not in that situation, and how the language we use to describe a sequence of occurrences can determine the regularities we find in that sequence of occurrences. So here's the first definition. We call a thing x grew if at a certain time t one of two conditions is met. Either x is green at time t and t is before the year 2100, or x is blue at time t and t is during or after the year 2100. Now it's important to note that this definition is made in our language so that green and blue here are exactly what we think they are. Now here's a question to test this. So if we look outside at the lawn and see it's made up of green grass then today you can correctly say that the grass is grew because condition one of definition one is met. But now pause for a second and consider you or more likely your great-grandchildren looking out at the grass and seeing that it's green after the turn of the year 2100 and that's green in our today sense of the word. Now here's another question. Now your great-grandchildren can't correctly say that the grasses grew because neither condition in definition one is met. Now similarly, let's say we head down to the beach today and look out over the Pacific Ocean. So here's a question. Then we would not be correct if we said that the ocean is grew because neither condition of definition one is met. But suppose now that our great-grandchildren did the same thing after the turn of the year 2100. So have a go at this question. Now your great-grandchildren would correctly say that the ocean is grew because condition two of definition one is met. Now let's have a look at another definition. This one says we call a thing x bleen if at a certain time t, one of two conditions is met. Either, condition one, x is blue at time t, and t is before the year 2100, or, condition two, x is green at time t, and t is during or after the turn of the year 2100. Again, this definition is made in our language, so that green and blue here are just what they ordinarily mean. Now consider the two examples we just saw of the grass in the ocean. We said that it would be correct to say that the grass is grew today, but incorrect to say that after 2100. So here's another question. Now what happens is that we can't say that the grass is bleen today because neither condition of definition two is met. Now here's another question. On the other hand, our great-grandchildren can correctly say that the grass on the lawn is bleen after 2100 because condition 2 of definition 2 is met. Now, similarly, we said that it would be incorrect to say that the ocean is grew today, but correct to say that the ocean is grew after 2100. So, have a go at this question. Now what happens is that we can correctly say that the ocean is bleen today, 
because condition one of definition two is met. So have a go at this question. Our great-grandchildren, on the other hand, can't correctly say that the ocean is blean because neither condition of definition two is met. Now, these definitions might look a little bit weird, but the point of all this is to illustrate that in terms of the old ordinary colour words, the grass and the ocean stay the same. But if we use new language to describe the colour of the grass and the ocean, so the grublean words, then the colour of those things changes depending on when it is that you're describing those things. So this is key point one. It says language can determine whether we find change in a situation or not. Now suppose we meet an alien race. Uh, I think the book talks about a tribe of people here instead. And this alien race has the same language as ours apart from their basic colour words. Now in this new language, suppose Gru and Bleen are basic colour words. So that's just what the aliens use to describe things. Now suppose the aliens make the following two definitions. Definition three. They call a thing X green if at a certain time T one of two conditions is met. Either condition one, X is grew at time T and T is before the year 2100. Or condition two, X is bleen at time T and T is during or after the year 2100. And let's suppose they make this other definition, definition four. The aliens call a thing X blue if at a certain time T one of two conditions is met. Either condition one, X is bleen at time T and T is before the year 2100. Or condition two, X is grew at time T and T is during or after the year 2100. Now here the definitions are made in the aliens language, so the grew bleen words are what they ordinarily use, and these other words, green and blue, are new to the aliens. And let's suppose further that the alien word grew refers to the same colour that we describe as green, and that the alien word bleen refers to the same colour that we describe as blue. Now, next, we suppose we've got a regular old human gem expert like us, and we have an alien gem expert too. And the time is one minute to midnight on the 31st of December 2099, so right before 2100. Now, we suppose we give them this gemstone. It's an emerald. Now, what happens? Because the alien word grew refers to the same colour that we describe as green, our human gem expert would say this emerald is green and the alien expert would say this emerald is grew. These are both basic colour words in their respective languages. Suppose though that we want the experts to predict the colour of the emerald after the stroke of midnight January 1st 2100. And suppose they predict this using rule S that we saw in the last video. Remember that rule S said this. An argument of the form n% percent of the observed x's have been y's, therefore the next observed x will be a y, gets assigned an inductive probability of n over 100. Well, the human gem expert would reason like this. 100% of the times that emeralds have been observed, they have been green. Therefore, the next time an emerald is observed, it will be green. And so rule S assigns this an inductive probability of 1 for the human gem expert. Now, according to rule S, the alien expert, who speaks in terms of gru and bleen, reasons like this. They would say, 100% of the times that emeralds have been observed, they have been grew. Therefore, the next time an emerald is observed, it will be grew. And rule S for the alien expert assigns this argument an inductive probability of 1 as well. But the point is that in our language, the human one, the alien expert's prediction is false. Because in our language, something is grew just in case it's our blue after the turn of 2100. The alien predicts the emerald will be grew, so to the human, 
the emerald is predicted to be blue, but the human doesn't think the emerald will be blue. They predicted that it's going to stay green. And similarly, in the alien's language, the human expert's prediction is false. Because to the alien, something is green just in case it's bleen after the stroke of 2100. The human predicts the emerald will be green, so to the alien, the emerald is predicted to be bleen. But the alien doesn't think the emerald will be bleen, they think it will stay grew. So, what's the point of all this? The point is that both the human expert and the alien expert project irregularity when they make their predictions. But when they listen to the other one's projection, made in the other one's language, they don't project irregularity anymore. And why is that? Well, if the human is asked to describe the situation in terms of the human definition of Gru and Bleen, they'll predict the emerald will change from Gru to Bleen because of definitions 1 and 2 from earlier. And if the alien is asked to describe the situation in terms of green and blue, so their new definitions, they'll predict the emerald will change from Gru to Bleen because of definitions 3 and 4 from earlier. So what does this show? This shows that the language we use to describe a sequence of occurrences can determine what regularities we see in that sequence of occurrences. And this brings us to the Goodman paradox. To the human, remember, the regularity the emerald is grew is not projectable because of what happens after the turn of 2100. If the human projects the regularity all emeralds so far observed have been grew, then they'll be led to a ridiculous prediction. They'll predict the emerald will still be grew after 2100, which to the human is false. On the other hand, the regularity the emerald is green is perfectly projectable to the human. And you can say a similar thing for the alien expert. To the alien, the regularity the emerald is grew is perfectly projectable, but the regularity the emerald is green is not projectable because of what happens after the turn of the year 2100. But it's not only that projecting an unprojectable regularity might lead to a silly prediction. The Goodman paradox says that projecting unprojectable regularities might lead to a prediction that conflicts with a legitimate prediction that's made by projecting a projectable regularity. And not only that, but one that's made using the same set of data. If we speak from the human gem expert's perspective, the unprojectable regularity is that the emerald will remain grew. The projectable regularity is that the emerald will remain green. The data here is the so far observed colour of all the emeralds we've seen. Now the first prediction is ridiculous, and the second one is legitimate, and they directly contradict one another. The first says the emerald will be blue, but the second says the emerald will be green. And the alien thinks a similar thing. But because these predictions are just functions of the language we've used to describe the situation, there's no neutral ground from which we can decide which of those predictions really is the legitimate one, really is the right one. So the significance of the Goodman paradox then is that it demonstrates how unprojectable a regularity can be. A projectable regularity for one person might be unprojectable for another, and that projecting unprojectable regularities might give you contradictory predictions with even legitimate predictions. So if we're ever to come up with rules for a scientific inductive logic, they must tell us how to avoid this problem. They must tell us which projections are legitimately projectable. Now, all of this stuff is pretty fiddly to work through, I understand that, so I'd recommend maybe watching this one twice over, make some detailed notes, and go and read through the text a couple of times as well. Uh, that's going to be useful for assignments and exams, and it's also going to be useful to be able to succinctly describe Goodman's paradox using a couple of examples like we've used here. Now, there are some questions on the assignments that will hopefully help with that as well. So make sure you're taking care and be patient with all the stuff we've seen in this video. Next time, we'll round off chapter four and our discussion of the problems surrounding inductive logic 
by linking Goodman's paradox to the principle of the uniformity of nature that we saw come up last week. So have a go at your reflection questions and I'll see you next time.